We are live. Welcome to Tenet Thoughts Film. I think I might start briefly with a short spoiler-free review. So, for now, ignore the spoiler tag up there at the top. I'm going to say before I get into spoilers, don't worry. First off, obviously, if you're going to watch this in theaters, please follow Corona Guy guidelines. Let's see. The Yeah, you know, for those confused, I realize by the time when I put this video up, it won't have premiered in you in the US yet, but you know, some of us other countries have been fortunate enough to get it before y'all do. So yeah, just briefly without spoilers. I think it might be his best since Inception. It's incredible. I'd say it's worth watching just for Elizabeth Debicki, who I have thought was incredible ever since I saw her in Widows. I would say this uses her as well as that does, and I would watch the woman read the phone book at this point. And... Uh, you know, it's got the it's got some incredible visuals like we expect from Nolan. It's got some mind bending puzzle plotting. You know, it keeps you guessing. I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't fully understand everything that happened in the movie, but for like I'd say maybe half of it, I had like my face was either in this like huge grin or I was like you know, just every, every, yeah, the, the, it's never boring. It's, you know, there's a, the, the, you know, the, the humor and, and the, the sort of wit is, is really strong. I, yes, that is, you know, the, the, I was quite impressed with, John David Washington, Denzel Washington's son, this is the first thing I see him in. And the, the you know, I would say especially, the, the people who are especially great in this is Elizabeth Debicki, Robert Pattinson. I thought Kenneth Branagh was great as well. You know, if you've only seen him and, in, in, you know, if you're not familiar with his best work, then I, you know, give this a chance. I guess, I mean, if, if I had to say something negative, I did not follow everything. And I think a lot of other people, I, I'll, you know, I haven't really, I, I don't think I've read any reviews yet, you know, so, but I can imagine there are definitely, I am not going to be, I hope, the only person who watched this and was just not completely, didn't completely follow everything going on. You know, but it is a movie that I would say it's definitely going to reward rewatching, and I think that is about yeah. But you know, obviously, if you live in a place where Corona, where you're not sure that the it's safe to go to a movie theater due to Corona, you know, no no movie is worth dying for. So. You know, or or risking killing someone in your family or social circle, over, obviously. I th yeah, I think that's going to be it. So from here on out, spoilers for 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 Tenet, and I might spoil other Nolan stuff, but I think I'll try to warn ahead of time before I say any. Now let's see. I am. Yeah, so, so a few disclaimers. I might discuss some of the, you know, I'm, I'm going to just put a, a content warning and or trigger warning on. I might discuss the, the violence against women and the, the, let's see, I guess, 
Yeah, that is that is especially the, the um, what's it called? Spousal abuse, I think it's called. Is yeah. So let's see. I don't know. Going on. I think the movie. You know, obviously, for sure, it does use the fact that there's this spousal, you know, that that's, there are going to be people who watch it to see something that has that in it. And that, that doesn't mean that they're, like, getting off on it, but, you know, when, when you put something like that in the movie, it's, you know, you, you should treat it with a lot of respect. And I do think that it's, the, the movie does do, you know, the, the fact that, at the end of the movie, she does get, you know, she gets payback on him, you know, and the, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so, my own quote-unquote film critic rating for this is 10, you know, inverse machines, inverted knees, heading right back into theaters to watch it again out of 10 and that is also my personal rating and it was my birthday recently last year I got a Spider-Man movie a Nolan movie also makes an excellent present so I let's see I am see. okay here we go so that brings us so the first section, notes taken while watching. Excuse me. So, I really appreciate that it starts like basically there's an action scene almost immediately. You know, this is something no one does really well. You know, the the I yeah, I don't really need to, to say exactly which ones. You know, if you've watched some of the other ones. Yeah. And you know, they're the they're at the start at the the op opera hall, I wanna say it's called. You know, like the, the guys with guns they they come out, they, they start attacking the 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 orchestra, they, they smash some of the instruments. These guys are not supportive of the arts at all. I thought the, you know, the bit with how, okay, so apparently he is the protagonist. You know, I, I might just call him JDW for John David Washington. You know, JDW is, is hiding in the back of this like Russian version of a SWAT team van and he and these couple of other guys are gonna pose as the Russian equivalent of SWAT to get this spy out I thought that was a really great way to very quickly communicate to the audience what JDW does you know before before he gets recruited Wow, they don't even have a, the organization doesn't even have a name, does it? But once he starts doing tenant stuff in the movie, you know, from from there on out, that's you know that's who he is. So we need to know what was he before, what makes him so good at doing this sort of thing, and yeah, you know, he he does this sort of thing. He he goes in as sort of undercover. If they're shooting, he can handle that, you know. And we see that he's he he doesn't want uh, what's it called? He doesn't want the he doesn't want any innocents hurt, even if it means potentially risking the mission. I actually, when I you know when I watched the movie and I thought back to the trailers, I thought maybe that was the test: is he willing to put everything on the line to save everyone but really the test was the not giving away the information and taking the the fake suicide pill and I guess the idea is supposed to be 
that after everything, the, the let's see, I guess this, the idea is supposed to be that they were watching him in all that time when he's being tortured, and as soon as the, as soon as he takes the pill and bites down on it, they move in, they're like, okay, he really would rather die than tell the, you know, tell them the truth, so, yeah. And I, I like the the whole thing with what was it? We live in a twilight world, and what was it? There are no friends at dusk, or some something like that, you know. And they they use that a couple of times, and and the you know the the let's see, yeah, when when he's getting the the spy out of the you know. He has to say it twice because the guy is so stunned at what's going on, you know, and, and he responds, you know, and, and I forget if that's where, but one of them is like, you know, we have no friends at dusk, but you'll do, or so, some, something like that, you know, and it also makes me giggle more than it should that in certain languages, at dusk translates almost, like, almost letter for letter to the verb to screw so no friends to screw in a twilight world now let's see yeah i mean it was really compelling seeing him going to to try to stop all those bombs and yeah and he was like JDW was almost shot by one of the inverse bullets. I guess that turns out to, you know, by the time you've watched the entire movie, you know that he goes back through time, like, for a while, like, for years. You know, that's where he originally recruits Neil. So, I guess he actually, like, I, I like that, like, what was it? We get, we get into a lot of trouble or we get busy or something you know and and the let's see yeah so so that's yeah JDW is the one who saved himself you know once he's inverted and goes back through time and I've gone across line I like the bit of like when when he's being tortured like the guy winds back the clock by one out you know that nice little subtle because that's that's what the movie's gonna be doing winding yeah I have to say I I really the the I the the line we rebuilt your mouth just I don't know it just I mean I'm glad they acknowledge it because yeah he was being tortured for all that time and it was like you know it's PG-13 torture but it's confirmed. Yeah, they were pulling his teeth out, and you know that that's that's the the there's your if you if you you know if you really couldn't stand this movie, you could say you know I would rather be in the in the train yard having my teeth pulled out than have to watch this movie or something like that. You know. And the, you know, we're introduced to the concept that in order to win, the the people who work on this, you know, fight to know as little information as possible. You know, and by the end of the movie, you understand, well, yeah, I mean, the, the you know, so Sotar and his people can literally, you know, once everything has already happened, they can go back in time and you know n now knowing what's going to happen and use the knowledge of what's going to happen so yeah if you know if you have a lot of information in a single place you know it's you're you're making his job incredibly easy so you know and i i like the thing with you know oh you know one of those you know that that kind of 
you know, uniform and a, was a placard can get you in almost anywhere. Almost, you know, and you know, you know, that means he's supposed. What was it like? T tenet or t t yeah, yeah. I, I've already. I'm sorry. Um. There's there's so much to remember about this movie, but I think it's something like that. That's that's gonna be like if if you know that's gonna be an incredible in joke for for people like you know if you watch the movie and you you know you're you're trying to like and and someone is like you know so it's, I don't know like let's yeah yeah like you're you're you know you you showed you're you're you showed up to an establishment either right before closing time or a bit before opening time and they're like oh, no no just you're not coming in you can be like tenants don't do that that's really jerky behavior i'm sorry I'm, i shouldn't i'm not i am not endorsing that kind of behavior i'm just saying that that was the first thing that popped into my mind and i really like you know that i saw some people online say you know i i don't think we need to get an explanation i really appreciate that apparently what's going on and i i jotted down in in keywords okay so What's going on is inversion. It's reverse entropy through fission. That's, I mean, the, you know, the, I, I appreciate it's it's not quite like throwing the word quantum into you know into your explanation a bunch of times. I mean, it kind of it almost makes sense. Like. It's, yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a good balance between being just you know techno babble and and like kind of almost something that makes sense because technically you know if you could reverse excuse me the the what's it the call the process of entropy if, yeah and and the you know there's the you know, she's explaining it to him, and he's like, "Cause comes before the effect," and she says, "Not really. That's just how we perceive it." And just, I, I really love Christopher Nolan. Movies, his his work. Let's see. And I'm sorry, did I? When 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 J D W, you know holds up and, and fires the gun and and you know obviously doesn't go exactly as he expected did he did he actually go whoa like was that was that a like a reference to the matrix which was a reference to bill and ted like that's wow and 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 there was also the line don't try to understand which i think might have been written more for the audience than for jdw And and then there's the thing with like and an inverted nuke could affect the past, not only the future, and and just these concepts. Yeah, I really enjoy. I, I honestly, I think every single time Robert Pattinson is on screen, it's enjoyable. Like I don't, I don't think there's a single scene that he's in that isn't better for having him in it and the first time they meet is is very fun like like the the just just the you know yeah there there are so many I, I like the I like the drink order among other things. I like the you know the, the waiter comes up and and you know Robert Pattinson is like you know making his like I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it has alcohol and some some kind of drink order. And then he says, "And a diet coke," you know. And and then he walks off. And JDW kind of looks at him like, "What?" And and he's like, "You never drink on duty." Well, that's true, but I prefer Apollinaris. No, you don't. And it's like, and once you watch the you know the entire movie, you're like. Oh yeah, he knows. They've you know, 
they've gone, you know, they've, they've had refreshments together, you know, many, many times over the years. So he knows exactly the kind of, yeah. And, I mean, I guess, is that Neil just not quite doing a good job at hiding? Yeah, I get because he's kind of supposed to be hiding. I guess it's just the the he's he's so used to telling to to JDW knowing everything, so he doesn't have to hide anything from him. So that now that he finally does have to start hiding things from him, it you know he has some trouble with it. I really the whole bungee jumping thing like the. Well, what was it? The the bunch, bungee jumping, bu bungeeing. I don't think bungeeing is a word. It may not be, but it is the only way we're getting out and maybe in. And and then they it, it, and it that is like. I don't know how Nolan keeps. I'm always in awe of people who keep coming up with such compelling. But yeah, I've never seen that before. I've never seen someone bungee cord up a building and then, like, no, that's, yeah. And, it's, yeah, the, the. And, and, you know, the. Um, I'm sorry. I think her name was Priya. You know, she goes up to the, you know, and, and presses, like, the panic button or something. And JDW is like, no one, no one hears it. No one who's going to be able to help you can hear that. And then it cuts. And, you know, you see the, the you know, the, the monitor, you know, CCTV thing. And, you know, okay, clearly there's someone there, you know. And then we see that Robert Pattinson is holding them at gunpoint. And then he's like, don't don't let it get cold and and the guy uh, okay I guess I'll keep eating the the this like <laughs> yeah that's I'm sorry I really I that that was I hope they work together again because you know no, Nolan and, and Pattinson because the they yeah they really the, this was a lot of fun I'm not gonna lie when when Priya said that. You know, a woman using a man as a front is is like a good. You know, that's that's a that's useful. You know, it's it it means that people take her more seriously because they're not going to work with a female, you know, arms dealer. No, no, no they're going to work with an arms dealer of a male arms dealer. And then by the time they realize that she's actually female, you know, yeah, it's 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 a clever. And and I greatly appreciate you know the the what's it called you know he he points out about how you know women um excuse me women are you know unfairly perceived as not being you know as as capable or important as as men and, and you know I gotta admit I the moment I heard it I was like. Is that like supposed to, you know, because I was, I was trying to, I was kind of trying to, to get ahead of the movie. And, I mean, ultimately, I don't think I did end up really figuring, no, I, I guessed, I, I, I almost guessed. When the, the fight, you know, JDW fighting the guy in the gas mask, I thought that was Robert Pattinson. Because, you know, Robert Pattinson sees the guy without a, a gas mask, and there's, like, this knowing look, and, you know, so, and, and then when he goes to help, he clearly makes sure that JDW doesn't shoot the guy in the gas mask, and, yeah, you know, so I thought that that was who it was, but it turns out it actually was JD. you know, he fought himself, that's twice, and once, uh, yeah, sorry, the, the, and and once while we know about it. Yeah, so so let's see. I was I was trying to figure out if if there was gonna be like a, a special twist with Elizabeth Debicki. 
now. Let's see. And it's also because you know I, I, you know when you when you rewatch videos and and watch like video essays on on some of these movies, you know, uh, yeah, I can't really give too much of it. Some of his movies will show a major hint at one of the last things in the movie as one of the actual first things in the movies. And I like the scene between Cat and JBW at the restaurant. And yeah, yeah, the moment that she said, I dream, you know, I dream of diving off that boat. I, like, I didn't realize that it would turn out to actually be her. But the moment that she said, I was like, by the end of the movie, we're going to see her make the, you know, dive off a, a boat or something. I did not realize that it would turn out to always have been her diving off. Yeah. I quite enjoyed when, you know, the, the, the restaurant, like, you know, the Russians attacking JPW and like, they take him out into the kitchen and he's like, I ordered my, what was it? Chili, you know, you know I ordered my chili an hour ago. Like just the, that's, that's pretty funny. And, and like how he, at first, like he takes a hit or two to get them to lower their guard. Because they're not used to dealing with someone as capable as he is. So, you know, they, they knock him to the floor and then grab his hand and put, you know, in, yeah, they, they plant his hand on the on the thing. And they're going to smash it with the, the club. And then right before they hit it, he, you know, remove, you know he, he moves the hand and attacks one of them. And then he's in a better position to, you know, where if he fought... From right away, they you know, but now they think that this is a guy they can push around like they're used to. You know, N normally when Sater sends them to beat someone up, it's someone they can beat up. You know, it's not like he's not. He he doesn't usually have a problem. You know, using guns on people. So if they thought he was that that JDW was a big deal, they they wouldn't just be doing this. You know, they yeah. I, I really, I mean, this is, again, I love Christopher Nolan's filmmaking, but I really love the bit where, like, we see Cat talk to JDW, and then we see JDW talk to Robert Pattinson, and it's as if the three of them are having the same, like, you know, one of them will say something that the other is like, uh, yeah, like, like, yeah. One of them will say something, and then the other says something shocking in response to that, and then the third one reacts as if they're shocked, as if they, you know, it's cut almost as if they were in the same scene. Because, we, you know, we know how this goes. You know, first the two of them are going to meet and exchange some information, and then one of those two people is going to go meet a third person, and they're going to exchange information. We've seen this in a million spy movies, you know. So I really appreciate that he spiced it up a little by having the the yeah. I really love the whole fr crashing a plane scene. Pretty much everything about it. I, I enjoyed that one guy stealing a gold bar. Like you know, just, no, one's, no one's gonna miss that. And and the you know when when JDW is like breathing and in in this you know slightly weird and obvious way and then he starts to walk off and and Robert Pattinson looks at the guy and it's like yoga <laughs> and you know we think that you know the way it, the way they talk about it sounds like this is going to be fine you know they they've got all the the everything worked out they're going to like pick the locks and all you know it's it never gets boring, but it sounds like they're gonna be fine. And then the the lock pick breaks, and it's like, 
how how attached were you to being able to breathe? Because I don't I don't know if we're gonna have that ability for very much longer. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just trying to prepare you for for what's this is. <laughs> oh boy, what are we gonna do? And and just that was that was such a great and and Robert Pattinson's face like I really because because he's like this. Like later we see that he's he's also very capable, but at this point he seems like he's still just like he feels very new to this and and like he's not maybe not one hundred percent ready for this, but they you know he's the best they've got like you know and he like he his face gets so red with the and and we've already been you know it's like ah forty five seconds this was easy and then the other guy's like aren't you supposed to be running during it and you know it's like you you really need this is not going to be as easy as you might think it is because you are not as, as like, just, yeah. And the, yeah, the, the fight between JDW and, you know, JDW dash SWAT was really incredible. So it, it was worth watching twice in, in a single viewing of the movie. I, it's just no one puts things on the screen that we've never seen before. You know, obviously there's gonna, you know, there are gonna be imitators. You know, afterwards, but like, who even? How do you even come up with that? So, yeah, and let's see. Yeah, and and Freya and and JDW talk about you know he may have to help Sator help sorry help Sator steal plutonium and yeah and let's see ah, my back you know we the the cat talks about how you know how passionate she cares about being with her kid and I appreciate you know usually in Nolan movies it's the the male protagonist the, the white male protagonist who has that sort of thing I, I appreciate that it you know that that they gave that to a female character although obviously there's the gender stereotype in there but in this case I think you know it a counter argument to that would be that he's done this before, but it's usually the, the white you know the white dude, who's so so yeah I appreciate that. Let's see. And the the I I yeah the whole thing with with Sator like sits there and tells him how he's going to kill him, and then like. The the uh, what's it called? There's the yeah the the turn of the yeah. And I I like the the what's it called? You know there's the there's the like they're supposed to talk about you know something but it's. I know, I know, I promise. I washed my hands very carefully since, you know, the last time I was out, and I will do so again before I go out again. I, you know, and I don't touch my face when I'm out, outside. Now, let's see. Yes, so, yeah, you know, they've got these secret, secretive, secret things to talk about, so they get on this boat where, like, hypothetically, if someone had bugged this thing, the noise would make it impossible to, to hear any of the conversation, and it's this isolated place, so you can't, like, hide, you know, a, a van with, you know, flowers by Irene with, with a, you know, what's it called? Like, a, uh, you know, surveillance equipment kind of thing. And then she, like, you know, she undoes the thing and says, 
burn in hell, Andre. And he goes, you know, and, and the, the, you know, and, and JDW saves him. And, I mean, later on, I, th I, th I keep worrying about mispronouncing Sator, Sator, so I'm going to call him Andre. Andre later says, no, 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 I was the one who loosened that thing. Does that mean that he already experienced that and then he sent himself back and he loosened it so that she would be able to pull the thing because he knew that JDW would save him or he wanted to see if JDW would save him? Uh, yeah. I really appreciate that the movie ends without, the, you know, Cap and. Ah, I'm sorry. One second. JDW ending up together. You know, not every movie needs to have the the yeah. And I I don't think that she's really looking to just throw herself into another relationship. Even if she really likes the guy, I, I appreciate that. You know, we've we've had enough movies where it's like, oh, they, you know, they end up together. It's I'm, if it's the story you want to tell, that's fine. But I don't think we need to keep. You know, I think it's fine to have movies where it's. Although I guess if you go far enough back, there were probably a bunch of movies where they didn't end up together. Because, no wait, no, I mean, I guess. As far back as movies have been made, yeah. I, I, anyway, anyway, and we, you know, we get a good glimpse into Andre. You know, we're told as a teen he dug plutonium, which you know, some kids are into Nickelback. Some anyway, which really helps explain just why he is so uh, the the kind of what's it called he's he's very nihilistic you know yeah his line is it was my own mistake which was also something that made me think wait is it that she's actually the arms dealer and he's just the front, so when he when she does something, he refers to it as him doing something. Which again, I mean you yeah, if you've watched that particular Nolan movie, you know where I got that idea. But yeah, so so the Yeah, I, I think I, I like that that they made the, the villain this this Russian guy who Basically, like the 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 madness of the Soviet Union, really, yeah, it it's. I I I don't think it should be forgotten just how inhuman the the and and that has nothing to do with. Ah, I really don't want to get into politics in this video. Okay, let's see. You know, Stalin was a monster, and that doesn't have anything to do with religion or lack of religion. But he he was a monster, and he was just horrible to his own people. And yeah, it, it you know too too many people don't really remember that today. And yeah, so anyway. I like the it was it was kind of Hitchcockian the the bit with the gun and the jewel like JDW gives her a gun and tells her you know use it but don't you know try to you know I hope you don't need it but now you have I, I don't remember exactly what he says and she puts it in the jewelry case and then she gets you know she she basically leaps across the room practically and gets into bed and then he takes off his cufflinks. And is and and we're like no, don't open the jewelry case. You know, it's just 
that was such a great little yeah that was and and the yeah and I mean that is is that the gun she ends up shooting him with maybe now let's see And, you know, he says, if I can't have you, no one can. And, you know, that's why he is willing to destroy everything for the, yeah, it's, and, and she points out, you know, if you hurt me, I'll scream and he'll, you know, he'll come in here. And, you know, the, the, they really, they go over the whole And where's the Yeah, I, I like the bit with the helicopter and the you know the gold transporting and, and that one guy who gets caught having stolen a bar and you know gets completely you know beaten to you know hit in the face repeatedly with, with the gold bar. Until there's all the, the blood on the yeah. And Andre says, you know, I'm I'm a tiger. You admire you what was it? You don't you admire a tiger until he attacks you or something like that. And you know, she straight up she has a gun on him. And it it was at this point in the in the movie watching experience, I noted I the you know, the movie's not like non stop inverting. And I, I really appreciate how much restraint they show because then after a while, I don't know, I guess it's probably, it's not half the movie, right? It's like maybe the, the last third of the movie is basically taking place during the first two thirds. You know, we're, we're going back to the start of the movie and yeah, as, as Nolan is wont to do, the movie ends where it starts or vice versa and yeah and and the you know so I, I I think I I appreciate that he didn't jump directly into that because it that is a lot to take in and if he if he went to that too soon it would just be overwhelming and I feel like by the time he has the movie actually go yeah from from then on we're you know I'm not gonna claim that I always understood exactly what the goal was and why but I wasn't like the the I, I think he, he made the right decision by it, but yeah and the the backwards car chases were very fun and oh <laughs> And yeah, and I know to hear that you know JDW really wants to save everyone. He doesn't want anyone to to die if he can at all, you know. And he chooses to save Cat despite the the risk to the mission and. And the inverter machine thing, like the the where where Andre goes through into the past, and we see through the window that there's two, and and because he does it twice, he gets, you know, he yeah he interrogates JDW twice, but, but yeah. And, you know, the, um, what's it called? JDW tells me, you know, you know, standard SOP. I know, I know that's not how you say it. I feel like pissing people off if they follow it with standard operating procedure or SOP is to lie. I get, and then afterwards he says, you know, but you lied. I guess by then he's just, he's, he's ready to pretend that he doesn't know what JDW's, or is he actually being surprised by JDW still, despite them having worked for years? And 
yeah, they go into the inverter machine together to save Cap, and it's like this thing of he is going to go to try to save her. And the whole, yeah, I, I like how they play the whole thing. Yeah. And we're told that the reason Andre, you know, Andre, you know, he goes forwards and then backwards through time. That's why he knows all of everything that's going to happen. That's why he knew how to deal with them when they were, you know, doing the car chase thing. And, and, <laughs> And when, let's see, yeah, when when he's when when JDW is talking to Neil about you know some of the stuff, he he says something like, "What do you believe?" And I noted that earlier he said to Cap, "What's in?" Or wait. What what does your heart tell you, or what is what's in your heart, something like that, you know? So that's like when someone says, "We, you know, I I don't know about this, I can't give you the full answer yet, or something." That's basically his kind of, you know. He says something like that to the other, you know, and it is sort of, I mean, it probably reflects his understand, like his his philosophy, like you know, he's basically saying, "I know that you don't know." But what do you think, you know, like, you know, you don't have to, I, you don't have, I don't expect you to give me the full answer yet. I know that you don't know, but what do you think? Like, and, and that is, I mean, that is, that's why he risks so much to, to save everyone. He doesn't know if, you know, he doesn't know for sure that he can, still complete the mission but he believes it and that's why you know so so it's almost like when other people say well i don't know yet or something like that he's almost like well, none of none of us know yet but what do you think though? Yeah, I, I, you know, after the second, and again, awesome, inverted time car chase, yeah, you know, the, the, um, Andre tells JDW, you, what was it, you got my pulse to, to, uh, excuse me, 210, not even my wife could, excuse me, could do that. And that's when I know, you know, he's always talking about his pulse. And, you know, then, yeah, la later we're told, well, that's, you know, it's because the, the death, death man's switch thing. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, let's see. And, you know, JDW notes that... Neil won't tell him who recruited him. And we're told that the algorithm inverts the world so that we all die right away. And just, I, yeah, incredible. And... Yeah, and here I noted, you know, when when they're when the characters are stuck in in you know and have to be transported really far, you know, they'll they'll show you know oh they're they're talking or you know that time where he's by himself he's like training and such to pass the time. And I think this was where I noted that they were calling her cat, and I was like, was her name always cat? Was it ever like? Catherine or Katie or piece of crap. I don't know. Let's see. 
Sorry, if you don't get that reference, that might sound like a dig on Elizabeth Debicki. It's not. It's a reference to something. And yeah, and and we see that you know he fought. Excuse me. You know, when, when JDW fights himself, we, we see that at least some of this is playing out the exact same way as it did the first time through. So, you know, and I, yeah, the, the car chase thing, I guess, too, because the car, we just didn't know that JDW was inside the car that crashed. But we see it crash both times. Okay, I'm not 100% I'm not certain about that one. I might be misremembered, but yeah, don't, don't hold me to that one, but... The you know the the thing for for sure the the fight works out the exact same way like it starts the same way and ends the same way so we have this you know and and she's you know she pointed out it's the grandfather paradox you know what was it she's like you know and evidently the people of the future think that you can push grandpa down the stairs and stab him and poke his eyes out that was that was a good way of like this, this is a good illustration of yeah and and yeah I mean it is basically like so basically everything that happened always happened because and and I mean I guess that is the thing because throughout the movie knowledge from the future affects the past and present excuse me I, you know, at, at one point, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, at least one point, the, you know, they're talking about that, like, you know, oh, this or that thing, then everybody dies. And then Kat says, everyone, including my son, so we have to prevent that from happening. So I got to thinking, could she, like, and I, I mean, ultimately, this is not confirmed within the text. We can we can theorize, but it's not confirmed. I would say I don't think I missed some some. You know, confirm. You know, we can have, we can theorize, and there might be. Uh, you know, but but we don't get outright confirmation. But I think that maybe her son was one of the people who, you know, would end up you know, in the future helping to develop this world ending thing. And, you know, again, I th I thought that she was the mastermind, so I thought she wanted the kid alive in part to you know, ensure that that the those you know, that that would be Well yeah, I mean, yeah, there at the end we see the kid walk off with Kat as someone says, the bomb that doesn't go off, no one notices, or something like that. But that could be the one that's more impactful, Some, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, no, that that's pretty much, that's strongly hinting that there's something there. Let's see. Yeah, and we're told that Pulse is a dead man switch. And, you know, he wants to end the world because he's dying, which... It's such a clever because, like, so basically, he, that means that, that brings up this whole idea of, you know, the, the, there's that quote of, like, the death of a single person is the death of an entire world. And, like, when, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into anybody's beliefs about the afterlife or such, but, you know, if you if you focus entirely on the the you know I ignoring any kind of ideas about an afterlife, if you focus entirely on the conscious body, we don't know what happens after we die. So, like hypothetically, you know, to us the world ends. You know, because we only we can only see things from our our own point of view. From our point of view, the world dies. You know, so that that was a great and. Like, if you, if you go back through, like, Nolan clearly does think about, you know, what, 
what would it be like to know about your death like beforehand to, to know you know to know for a long time that you're going to die and th these things and yeah I I really loved seeing the the like you have you know we've seen people training fighting many times but in this it's going backwards you know it's going backwards while the the characters are moving you know forwards and it's yeah and the you know I, I this is this is one of his best climax you know movement yeah the the so so we've got we've got big battle outside we've got you know I'm sorry I do not remember his name but the the you know the military dude who helps you know there's there's him and then there's you know I, I like that line you know what what about that that's need to know and you don't any other stupid questions you know, there are no stupid questions just stupid people and the yeah that that guy and then the the uh, JDW red JDW down there with the you know and and vocal vocal I'm sorry I, I do not remember but the I'm pretty sure that was the you know the, the right hand man of the um, of Andre you know and you've got Andre on the boat with uh, Andre on the boat with Cat right there, and Cat is just what you know. She's there to kill him, but she has to wait for the exact right moment. And let's see, yeah, you know all these things. And and it's such a great like she did such a great yeah. It's it's obviously it's really gross to see her having to, to pretend that she doesn't despise him, although it is great to see the, the, you know, the payoff of, you know, look at me, I'm not the, you know, this, this is, what was it, this is anger, this is not despair. I'm not the despairing woman that you step on, I'm the vindictive bitch that's gonna kill you, or so, something like that. That was, that was a great, you know, but but she she does an incredible job. You know, it's it's there, but it is she does an incredible job of this sort of like you know, no, and no one does kind of. I mean, he does he does like this kind of, uh, again. I don't really want to spoil, but there there are some of his other movies that have characters that sometimes seem very warm and loving and get really close to people and then when they least expect it you know the the woman the, the this female character will strike and and just you know the the you know she she's like ah oh, i'm going to i'm going to put suntan lotion on you you know and like just yeah Yeah, I, I know, you know, the film is in part confronting the unknown about that, you know, the the, the unknown elements, you know, the, the fact that you can't know for sure. And, you know, basically we found out the climate change is why the future people, you know, did, did this whole thing. And that's, you know, yeah. And, and I do appreciate that, like... Basically, he he tells J, you know Andre tells IDW JDW sorry. My greatest sin was putting a son in a world that no one should have to live in, or something like that. Do you think God will forgive me for that? And and he you know and he responds, I don't think you believe in God. You know you don't believe in anyone but yourself. And, you know, the, the, yeah, there at the end, you know, I, I don't think she says it exactly, I don't know, maybe she hinted at it, but, you know, she indicates the, the wound on her stomach, and it's like, oh, she might not be able to have kids again, this might have, um, I'm sorry, I, uh, it's been really long time since I took biology, but, 
I am sorry. I don't remember exactly what that part of the the bot the the the, the, the I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't remember what it's called. But yeah, like if there was, uh, is it? I guess hysterectomy. Is it's like they they, you know, a a. You know, yeah. That yeah. So you know that's part of why she's so angry at him. Let's see, you know, because she already told. You know, she she said earlier that you know as, um, you know as a mother, she's terrified of losing her child. And that was. That was that was all the notes that I took on the pad. So I think I'm just gonna move on to the next section. Let's see. So notes taken before watching. So Christopher Nolan himself, of his directorial work, following is the only one I haven't watched. Dunkirk is the only one that I don't love. But I. You know, I already made a video criticizing that. You know, I don't. It irked me. And, you know, that one I gave a 7 out of 10. The rest are 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, or 10 out of 10. And I've watched every movie of his at least twice, some only twice. Others, such as the Dark Knight Trilogy, I've watched many, many times. And. This is the first thing I see Robert Pattinson in, and I'm very impressed by this. I, I haven't been avoiding him except for the Twilight movies, but the you know yeah I'm I'm definitely going to watch the Lighthouse I want to say it's called, and like he did some movies with David Cronenberg, so that's you know I I'm not saying that every David Cronenberg movie is amazing, but I'm. I've never watched a David Cronenberg movie and left not feeling like there was at least something interesting in there. Even if, you know, not, not everything he makes is, is equally, you know. And, yeah, so, you know, Elizabeth Debicki I've seen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Widows. And, yeah, I, I had noted, I wonder if she's going to be as compelling in this as she is in Widows. And she is. It really, I... I I'm probably going to be going back and watching her earlier movies, and I, I, I'm not expecting all of them to, to, you know, to to let her, you know, to give her as much to work with as as this and Widows, but I really appreciate, you know, like after after Guardians of the Galaxy two, I was like, I mean, I don't I don't mind watching her again. I, she's. She is great in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I just, it's just not the kind of, you know, that movie was not going to make me fall in love with her as an actor. But Widows, and, and if I watched this before Widows, this would also have made me really, just, I, yeah. I, I hope that she works with Nolan again as well. And I know some people might be upset that there's so little Michael Caine in this. I mean, he is getting on in years. I, it's, it's really impressive that he is still doing movies at all. I mean, the, the man has been doing, let, let's see, the oldest stuff I've seen him in is from like the mid-60s. I'm not 100% certain exactly how far back he has been, but yeah. Yeah, so I I'm really happy that Chris Nolan is making movies so we have such intelligent takes on these concepts that before him were largely not in movies that you know they would appear in like comic books and 
you know, some, some video games and such. And I love that, but a lot of people, you know, you could not pay them to read a comic book or play a video game, but they will watch a Christopher Nolan movie. Let's see. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying he's the only one. You know, I... Let's see. I'm not saying he's the only one making intelligent movies. I'm just saying, you know, even in the late 90s, some of the early to mid 2000s, these concepts were not being treated with a lot of respect. But yeah, you know, he's made a number of movies where basically, if you don't buy the central premise, which is really out there, the entire movie is not going to work for you. There, there are a lot of movies where if you don't really get into the central premise, well, maybe there's some action scenes or some characters, some jokes you can still really enjoy, like. I would say several of the, like, for example, when I was younger, I, you know, they would, I, I would watch some of the James Bond movies, and some of them I really, I didn't get very much into, but they would be like, you know, one or two things to, to a James Bond movie, where it was like, oh, yeah, that, that's really great, but, like, you know, and, and that is, that is part of it, they, they, you know, for a lot of movies, they're very careful to try to make sure to put in a lot of different, uh, sorry, it has a specific name, like, um, test, test screening, kind of, like, yeah, I, I forget what it's called, but, you know, figuring out what all the different groups that the audience is comprised of want and making sure to put a little bit of everything in there but you know imagine if a huge chunk of the audience watching Inception doesn't go along with the concept of dreams being so important or watching Memento and simply being confused not being able to follow the movie going backwards there's a lot of stuff in Interstellar you know and now he's made a movie where literally things move backwards and you know some of these movies that you know, for at least some of the audience, the, the, you know, he, he doesn't get absolutely everyone, but a lot of people, you know, do follow the, the concepts. You know, it really was just a matter of time before Christopher Nolan would go, like, Inception and Memento again with all of these different, uh, yeah, T time moving backwards like Memento, and we're, excuse me, Inception with, excuse me, with the same movie having several different, like, ah, what's the, yeah, I, I think, you know, like, some of the time, like, it's not just that, like, oh, you know, there's different scenes in different settings, no, like, things will be happening at the same time you know, that, that, like, oh well, yeah, you know, you already know, if, if you've watched Inception, you already know what I mean about that, and if you haven't, I'm not going to spoil it here, and in this, you have, you know, some of, for, for the last third of the movie, everything is moving both forwards and backwards, basically. Now, uh, right, I was going to, let's see, hmm, I, Yeah, let's see. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, okay, I'm just gonna read on. You know, I'm not saying the following is a problem. One thing, or the only thing about the concept that I don't understand is without time immersion, how are gunfights going to work? I understand car chases, fighting, and such, but if the bullets fly backwards from the world back into the gun that someone brings into the fight, does that, or do they, do they have to lure someone into standing in front of where the gunfire will be? Does it ultimately have a similar effect to real life? The guns coming from the bullets coming in front of the gun, rather than from the gun itself. Maybe you can only fire 
guns in places when the future gun is fired. That could be an interesting limitation. Like maybe if you're using tenant, if you're going backwards in time, which is obviously useful in the fight, and you can only fire a gun somewhere where the gun was fired in the future. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it is basically just, it behaves as though it's a real, it's a regular gun. The, I mean, the, the, yeah. I appreciate that Nolan doesn't give too much away in trailers. He's one of the relatively few left by Nolan. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the pitch meeting, uh, I guess that is... Um, I'm spoil. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm just briefly going to spoil Inception. When I... As long as I'm holding off my finger, I'm going to be talking spoilers about Inception. When I lower my finger again, so, you know, if you don't want to hear spoilers for Inception, just mute and skip ahead until I lower my finger. The pitch meaning for Inception points out that ultimately, despite the crazy stuff you were doing in Dreamworld, ultimately most of the action scenes look like generic James Bond, with the only standout being the no-grab-hallway fight. And that, that is it for Inception. Spoilers. You know, I, I could tell from the trailers, you know, this movie has, you know, more crazy set pieces. And the, yeah, I mean, really, let's see, is there, there's no major action scene that's, like, completely straightforward, really, is there? Like, we've got, like, obviously the fight, it's, it's pretty straightforward that when the Russians try to, brutalize JDW in the in the restaurant kitchen but when you know you've got the let's see yeah like you know you've got the the car chase both times you've got the the battle there at the end yeah yeah the the really ultimately in in this movie there really isn't of um, an a major action scene that is fairly straightforward. There's always something, you know, going on. I, I appreciate that. Honestly, thinking back to the trailer, you know, it, it's that thing of like, how do you sum up, you know, two and a two and a half hour movie in a two and a half minute trailer? How do you sell people on that long of a movie with two and a half minutes? You know. So in the trailer, there's, like, uh, what's the word? You see the, the amount of, the, the percentage of screen time in the trailer devoted to inversion is much greater than in the movie. And I really appreciate that. I, I honestly, when I, I thought that there was going to be constant inversion, and I really don't think that would have served the movie well. I really appreciate that. Even as crazy as the movie gets, inversion is still special. You know, it's not something that's just constantly happening every, you know, in every single scene. You know, yeah. So, let's see. And, yeah, so a number of Nolan movies require him to really sell the concept to the audience. The movie simply will not work. And... You know, yeah, and Inception, for example, you know, uh, yeah, that movie manages to sell the, the audience on the concept. You're not confused while watching it. I was wondering about this movie. And yeah, I, ultimately, there there are times in this where I was confused, and yeah, I've I've heard others being confused as well. By now, let's see. And I I saw someone online. You know, point out. Sometimes it's a problem for no one to fully explain to the audience what's going on. And in Interstellar was, a you know, a problem when. Yeah. I think maybe, some of the stuff in this, like I don't know if there needed to be more explaining or, maybe, maybe it is a movie you just need to watch more than once, but. 
yeah, some of some of the stuff near the end just I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Yeah. Something I love about Chris Nolan is that he rarely does sequels or shared universes, which means that what happens in one movie might be the last time we see these characters and events, which can make them a lot more powerful. I really don't want Memento to Prestige to Inception to don't get me wrong, I love these three movies. They're some of my favorite movies. And you know, and, and some of my favorite movies are sequels. But there are, you know, as as a quick you know, I love most of all of I love all of the MCU. Not all of it equally. I don't love Iron Man 2 as much as you know, but the the yeah, so, yeah. Qu quick example, you know, some of my absolute favorite movies are the second and third Captain America movies, you know, both of which are sequels and very much build on the movies that came before them. But, you know, there are a lot of movies that should not have sequels. And it also helps when he does make more than one movie in the same series, it was always a planned trilogy. You know, for The Dark Knight, they were never going to make, like, six Batman movies in that continuity, or even four. That's why the three movies go together so well. There was never, never supposed to be more than three. It was always, you know, when you watch the third one, it was always written to be the last one. And that's one of the, you know, I know not everybody loves that movie, but I do. I, I think it does an incredible job rounding out the trilogy and just, yeah. And he'll, he's also incredible at discovering things actors can do that almost no one else sees, Heath Ledger and Hathaway, etc. I guess, I'm not sure in this one, I mean, people already knew that these were incredibly talented, as far as I understand. I, I don't think, I'm not sure this one has any instances of, you know, but not, not all of the movies do. You know, basically every movie Nolan has made is, you know, about spycraft, a mystery, trying to figure out someone's secret, or something along those lines. And now, let's see, some of his movies have this thing where there's a moment where the sound cuts out and the audience's heart stops for like two or three seconds straight. I'm not, I don't think this movie has one of those, but again, it's not all of the movies and it's not too, yeah, um, let's see. Um, so yeah, this is the first time that a Nolan lead is not a white man, and you know, now it's a black man, it's still a man, but you know, baby steps to progress. And and yeah, I mean, honest. And the, the, yeah, let's see. So there's the thing with the, the thing and the thing. Um, right. Yeah, the, the, like, I mean, the, the thing where Elizabeth Debicki is getting revenge for, like, her family being hurt, that's the, that would usually be the, the, you know, white male lead getting revenge on, or, you know, going for revenge on, on some, yeah. Let's see. Or a villain character. Now, let's see. I've seen, you know, in some of Nolan's movies, there's, you know, there's some, something of a low opinion of the lower class, you know, in, in his movies, you may you maybe can't rely on them. Some of them are downright evil. I realize he did not invent this trope, but it is trope. But it is d disappointing to still see it today, when you know by now we realize it's far more dangerous. There are far more consequences when rich people are evil, and you know, rich people, you know, powerful people being, you know doing evil. Ultimately, I don't personally believe that any any person or any any living thing can be evil. There are evil actions, there are evil ideas, but, you know, but yeah, rich, powerful people 
doing evil things. You know, that's that's far, far worse and happens far too frequently in real life. Now, let's see. I... Let's see. Yeah, you know, some of Nolan's richer, otherwise powerful, you know, characters, powerful people characters are also sometimes extremely evil, but I feel like we see more individual, like more, more rich and powerful people not turn out to be evil than, than like poor people. Let's see. Right, so I copied in the trademark list from Nolan's page on IMDb. Bye bye all bio whatever. Okay, I'm just I'm not gonna read aloud all of these. I'm just gonna see if there's some that are like really interesting as a I think the sugar, like, what's the thing? Like, the the sugar has has worked its way through my system. I'm gonna go to bed pretty soon. I think. Let's see. Okay, I think that was everything. That oh right, yes, I took some notes from some videos I watched. I'm just real quick gonna skim and see if there's stuff that's like especially. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I think Yeah, so so there's some theories and I think Mr. Feature is what he got he thought that Branagh being uh, the the villain was a misdirect. And I I think that's actually why I was I think he maybe also was the person who said like oh you know Elizabeth Debicki is probably a villain. So Yeah, and he, he thought that manipulation of time was triggered by a gas. That's why gas masks were worn. When in, in the movie, it's actually that the, what was it, inverted lungs can't breathe normal air or something like that. I gotta admit, I, I'm sorry, I don't think I remember a single, by now, I don't think I remember a single word she said, but I liked the bit when she, like, you know, JDW is talking to this woman and trying to, you know, and, and he's like, can I drive a car? Well, the, and, and she's like, you know, this and this is moving backwards. This other stuff is moving forward. You got to be aware of this and this and this. And the thing, and, and like it starts a fire and then because it's moving backwards, he got, he, he was like, he got really cold and all these things. Yeah. Wait, why didn't, why didn't Andre like shoot him with a, with a, um, 
what's it called? Like a, an inverted bullet instead of blowing him up. Did he? I guess he thought that blowing him up would work, and he didn't know. That Because he knows, you know, he knows about this tech. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. So, I will say there were definitely times in the movie where, you know, I could, I could really tell, okay, John, you know, this is the first John David Washington performance I see. There were definitely times in the movie where it's like, okay, yeah, that is, that was very Denzel Washington of a, line delivery and of like yeah okay so let's see i'm i really like if anyone if anybody who could forward this to Nolan, Christopher Nolan himself, I am so glad that this is not, at least as far as I can tell, this is not like a sequel to Inception. Like, I saw some people say, oh, you know, I mean, technically speaking, there's a little white kid, there, there's a little white boy and little white girl, and, you know, in Inception, maybe they grew up and became, you know, Robert Pattinson and Elizabeth Debicki, you never know, and it's just like, People, come on. Not everything. Inception is an amazing movie. It's one of Nolan's best. It doesn't need a sequel. You know, why Why can't each movie just be its own thing? Like, just not everything has to be connected. Not everything has to be the MCU. Let's see. Again, as much as I love the MCU. I am I am not going to get into I've seen some people say oh you know the trailer for the Batman maybe the Batman and and you know maybe maybe Robert Pattinson's Batman is the the you know that may, maybe that Bruce Wayne is the same one from Joker and it's just please let these be their own separate things it really seems like this yeah Let's Right, yeah, and Mr. Feature also thought that Robert Pattinson would turn out to be not a good guy or something, but, and and there were some secrets with him, so, I, th I think, I, I don't have any ill will towards Mr. Feature, I thought his, in his videos were interesting, and, let's see, the, the, you know, I don't know, wow, yeah, his, his videos were interesting, and I, I think I enjoyed the movie more because of having watched his videos. I, I hope people don't give him a hard time for, you know, some, not all of his theorizing turned out to be accurate, but, you know, he, he did his best, and he, his guesses were very logical based on the footage. Now, right, and yeah, I, I wrote down some, some things about the the final trailer which came out like the 23rd you know so less than a week ago by now i don't love the theme music but a lot of cool footage in the trailer and you know that part where the building crumbles and then they rewound it explode that's that was that was amazing now i think that might be oh right yeah sorry I took some yeah I'm gonna 
go over. I, I noted some things that I might want to get into for when I, right, right, yeah. IMDb trivia, let's see. So, Robert Pattinson stated that he took inspiration for his character's accent, intonation, and mannerisms from English-American author and journalist Christopher Hitchens. Pattinson never uses his real London accent when playing British characters, saying, For whatever reason, it feels fake to me when I'm using my own accent for a role. If I just play myself on screen, I feel like a fraud. You know, and, and even before watching the movie, in the trailers, I can kind of hear how he si sounds like that and see how he looks like that. I mean, that's not the least provocative person to choose. He put out a book entitled Religion Poisons Everything. You know, so, so that's... But, it's, I mean, I guess they were happy with it. I, I hope that it doesn't hurt the movie's bottom line, because it, you know, it, it doesn't d deserve, you know, but, yeah. But Christopher Hitchens was controversial when he was alive. Let's see. Right. Uh, yeah. So this was scored by oh God, Ludwig Göransson. Right. Who won an Oscar for his work on Black Panther? And yeah, Hans Zimmer wanted to, but you know he. He was scoring Dune, so, but yeah, I love the Black Panther score, and yeah, I, I thought the score to this was great as well. The production team purchased and then crashed a real 747 airplane into a hangar. The stunt was all practical effects with no visual effects or CGI. Director Christopher Nolan originally planned to use miniatures and set piece builds. However, while scouting for locations in Victorville, California, the team discovered a massive array of old planes and it became apparent that it would actually be more efficient to buy a real plane of the real size and perform the sequence for real on camera. That's incredible because you can see they're, they're, you can sometimes tell when it's to scale and yeah, it re or, right, to scale, sorry, when it's not a miniature, whatever. And yeah, I mean, you can, it, it looks, you can tell that it's real when watching this and that's something no one loves to do. And the film's title is a palindrome, a word that reads the same backwards as forwards. You know, since the that's what the movie's about, moving backwards and forwards can both be, yeah. And apparently the, the actress who plays... I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. I'm not even gonna, but the, the female, the, the Indian female arms dealer that's apparently that actress's first Hollywood role. Yeah, the, the, you know, Nolan is a huge fan of James Bond movies, and Nolan tried to not just imitate Bond you know, while making this, he wanted to work from a memory and a feeling of that genre. I mean, personally, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess if he directs a James Bond movie, it'll be the first James Bond movie I've watched since Goldeneye, because I have, you know, I watch all of, I, I you know, I would watch him direct the phone book, but the, the, I would watch him direct traffic, 
but the the I, I don't personally care about James Bond. I I'm more interested in seeing him do something. You know, I you know whatever I'll, I'll you know and I'll probably watch the ones in between as as like research or whatever. I think you know if if he chooses to do a James Bond movie, I'll I'll watch it obviously, and that's that's fine. But I am more interested in, in something where he can you know I think this is far more interesting than him doing a Bond movie. A a I, I don't I don't think that I, I feel like a Bond movie would be too stifling for him, you know. I mean I, I realize that some would have thought that if, you know that that Batman would be too stifling for him, but he still managed to bring in a lot of depth there. But I don't know if the the I think a Bond movie would be too you know wh whatever. Actor Kenneth Branagh revealed that he read the screenplay for the film more times than anything he had ever worked on. He compared navigating through the script to doing the Times crossword puzzle every single day. There are images and things in the film that di director Chris Nolan had been thinking about for at least 20 years before actually making the movie. He worked on the specifics of the film for about six years. Holy crap. And his passion really is very clear in, in the movie. It's right there on screen. <laughs> After being offered the lead role in the film, John David Washington read the screenplay and director Crystal Nolan's locked office at Warner Brothers Studios. It took him around five hours to finish reading it because he kept flipping back and forth in pure amazement. Yeah, that... It, it really is, like, how... How did he manage? Yeah. This is incredible. When casting for the female lead, director Christopher Nolan nearly passed on Elizabeth Debicki because he thought that she was an American. He looked for a very British characterization, and after seeing her in Widows, he was convinced that she was from the States. So when his wife and producing partner, Emma Thomas, suggested the actress, she had to inform him that she was an American. And I'm not, I mean, I think I had already read that she was British before going to see Widows, but if I didn't know before watching Widows, I would have thought she was American. Yeah, she she's completely convincing in that, you know. The and and you know, obviously part of it is oh, she unlearned her British accent or so. She learned an American accent. There's no such thing as no accent. She's British, you wanker. I have not watched it. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's important to me that you know this. I have not watched that movie. I have not watched. Check. This thing booth, I think it's called. I've watched the cynical review of it. I think, is, is that what it's called? Cynical reviews. The cynical reviews video of, of that movie. I would not watch that. I would not subject myself to that movie. But but yeah, part of it is that she she learned a, an American accent, but also just if you look at the way she carries herself, the way she moves, she really does like you buy that she's American in that movie. Every every little thing about how she presents herself, and then in in this, and you know, I th I think I would also, you know, if if I didn't. If I didn't see, like, I, I think after, let's see, I don't, I don't remember exactly when I realized, but I looked up Elizabeth Debicki at some point before watching Widows. I think probably when I was about to watch it, you know, when I had planned to watch it, I looked up her and the other actresses. Yeah, you know, so I, you know, I saw there that she was British. I, she she does come across as British in 
excuse me, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 as well. Now, let's see. Elizabeth Debicki insisted on auditioning for her role, despite director Christopher Nolan offering her the part without money. It was important to her to know that she could do what he was looking for, and according to the director, she came in and blew everyone away, and I can completely believe that. Like, it just, she is so impressive. I, I probably will go watch her backlog, because just, yeah. Now, let's see. So... That is that is everything. Okay, so yeah, I I don't let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Is there any like final kind of Any sort of in closing? I had extremely high expectations, and the movie exceeded them. And I really like. I gotta say, it continues to be an incredible experience to watch Christopher Nolan movie in theaters. Like he really makes movies that are worth watching in in the cinema. You know, I mean, let, let's, let me real quick go over. So, the ones I went to the theater to watch are Batman Begins. Let's see. Inception. The Dark Knight Rises. Interstellar, Dunkirk, and now Tenet. And the others I've watched on DVD instead. And, yeah, like, it's just, he, he... Yeah. Um, I think that might be it. I really want to, to... Let's see. I mean, I can't reference that without... I, I can't say what this reminds me of without spoiling that thing. Let's, let's just say that there's a... There's a video game, and the, let's see, the, the, I'm not sure I, let's just say that, I, yeah, I'm probably just not going to be able to, to reference it without, because it's a huge spoiler for that game, and I don't want people to have that spoiled. So, okay, I think, yeah, if I recall, the line, when, when you get the big reveal, the line is, he gave his life for me. I think that's... Yeah, and, and there's a point where he's like, do I still have enough time? I, th I think with that information, that's as much as I'm going to be able to give you without spoiling. And with that, you know, you might have to do some sleuthing, but you could... Yeah, like, if you've, if you've played through the game and you can maybe recognize these quotes, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'm just, I really, uh, I, I really hope that this does well, you know, some people have talked about should, should it go to theaters, should they have postponed it for longer, and I just, you know, obviously, primarily, I hope that no one is hurt by, you know, just 
it's it's unreal to me that that it you know today when we have access to the information and the technology that we can't just take problems seriously and and actually approach but you know obviously don't don't put anyone at risk to watch a movie and you know but also don't pirate it it's, you know just I, I don't know I, I, I do hope that that the money that the movie makes a lot of money that it does that they don't end up losing money on it you know they they didn't know that th this would happen and you know the, the I, I mean if if you if you go if you go to see this and you're in a crowded theater, if you put on a mask, you can pretend you're traveling backwards through time, and that it's it's giving you the the you know modified oxygen or what whatever it was that you know for inverted lungs. But yeah, I think that is everything. So yeah, I really I. Nolan never ceases to amaze me, and I'm I'm really glad that I I feel like this is a more assured Nolan that I I I maintain I don't think I think Dunkirk was basically a failed experiment, and I wish that he had realized that it wouldn't turn out better than it ended up doing, you know, and. Let's see. I think Interstellar had some problems. I think The Dark Knight Rises, you know, he he did he definitely did his best, and the like. I don't know. It's it's you know, but but for sure, like stuff like Interstellar and, and Dunkirk, it really, like, you know, th this is. This is Nolan when, like, this is a return to form for Nolan. This is what we expected from Nolan from, and, you know, what, what we got in movies like Inception, The Dark Knight, The Prestige. I think that is the, especially, yeah. You know, so, so, yeah, this is... This is some of his best, and I I need to it needs to fully land. I need to end up understanding everything. I I think you know YouTube videos that explain what you know that explain a lot of these things are going to be extremely useful for a lot of people. You know, but but yeah. So the the let's see. Um, crap, what was I say? The the you know, I, I don't know 100% where it's going to land, but for me, it might be his best movie, and it's definitely up there with Inception and The Dark Knight as just, I mean, there's, I'm not sure that there's, there's anything that should be changed in here. Oh, sorry, and The Prestige, obviously. Sorry. You know, the, the, you know, it's just the, the, it's it's so carefully assembled to where just everything you know beautifully fits together and really makes you think and it has all these things you've never seen before you know it, it treats with respect concepts that like just yeah you know it it, it is a a Like the the um, ah, what's it called? Um, it's yeah. I, I I don't know yet if it's better if it is the very best, but it's definitely up. I, I there's nothing that could make me place this. You know. Way, way lower, you know. 
yeah, I, I really appreciate, you know, I, I don't know, I guess he had to get something like Dunkirk out of his system, and, you know, like Interstellar, it does feel like, you know, it's, it's him trying to process that he, you know, it's, he does feel bad about not being able to spend more time with his kids. But, but this really felt like, you know, th yeah, this, The Dark Knight, Inception, and The Prestige really feel like, you know, he really, he, he carefully thought everything about this through, and just the, yeah. And, yeah, I, th I think it's definitely a movie, you're, you're going to want to watch it more than once. And, you know, just discuss it with others and watch YouTube videos that analyze it. And, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I was very helpful in, in that regard. If, if you watch, you know, if you watch this and were like, oh, I didn't realize that that was that. And, you know, you know let me know. That, that, that would be great. And, you know, if you left my video even more confused than before you can let me know that as well that's that's okay to me and with that a good night so i hope you enjoyed watching as i enjoyed watching and recording and i will catch you next time